Hello everyone, my name is Devashish and I welcome you all to this video. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about SSDT table. So in the last video, we have discussed about system calls and there I have mentioned a term called SSDT. So in this uh, video, we are going to you know dig deeper into that. So um, let's take an example. So suppose you have a Windows system and there we have there we have a process running called Notepad exe and this notepad.exe wants to write a file to disk so to be able to write that uh, notepad.exe has to call an api called create file create file let's say create file a so this api is exported from kernel32.dll now Notepad.exe uses create file to write file, write uh, any file, maybe you know a.txt file to the disk. In this video, we are going to discuss about you know what happens in between how Notepad.exe actually uh, calls this uh, calls this Windows API to write file to a disk, and in this entire lifespan of this call, where does SSD table comes into picture? We are going to discuss about that. So, let's get started. So let's say uh, we, you, you guys are already familiar with this particular video. Let's say this is the virtual memory of notepad.exe. Half of it, let's divide it as user land and rest is kernel land. And we have kernel32.dll loaded in the user land. And to be able to write a file to disk, uh, this particular process has called create file A. Now, the create file A will actually internally calls another API called NT create file file A or ZW create file. A. So this is actually exported from ntdll.dll. This is also loaded in user land only. So after that, uh, the code of NT create file A within ntdll actually, you know, responsible for making the system call, which we have discussed, which is Ccenter. Ccenter. So, uh, if you just you know disassemble the uh, disassemble the code of uh, this NT create file A, you are going to see something like this. As you can see, this is the disassembly of ZW create file or NT create file within NT DLL. As you can see, there is a value called 25 that is being moved to register EAX, and after that, we have the system call here, which is C center. So, what is this 25? So this 25 is an index in the SSDT table, which is a kernel data, data structure. So this SSDT table have, you know, several entries, one, two, three, four, five, like that. And this 25 hex 25 is actually for create file. So if you dig into SSD table, uh, it will actually, you know, uh, it will look something like this. So this is the index and this is the function name and this is the address and this is the module module where it is exported from. As you can see uh, for Windows XP, it is actually uh, export. It is actually, you know, uh, based in NTO, NT, KRNLPA.exe, but mostly it should be NT, NTOS, KRNL.exe. This is the main kernel image of windows so what we have seen here uh, basically uh, when we call create file api from user land and it actually eventually transit into uh, a kernel mode version of the same api which is actually you know nt create file which is actually you know exported from ntos kernel.exe so if we actually summarize it like this uh, so the transition actually started from uh, kernel kernel 32 create file 
then nt create file or zw create file then the syscall actually you know takes place which is actually 0x25 and after that the ntuskernel.exe exports the kernel version of the same API which is actually you know again nt create file so this actually you know does the actual operation so this is actually the overall lifespan of a system call and meanwhile uh, SSTT table actually used to kind of find out the address of kernel mode version of nt create file so the SSDT table is referred to find out the absolute address of the kernel mode version of the API nt create file so that is the main purpose of SSDT now how we actually you know access SSDT table so for 32-bit operating system and 64-bit operating system they are accessed in different manner so let's take one more example so we have this um, user land and kernel land and let's say we have a we have a system call 0x1 now the transition has to happen from user land to kernel land and to be able to find out the kernel mode you know mm, kernel version of the api which is associated with this particular system call it has to refer ki service table which is our service descriptor table so for 32-bit operating system ki service table pointer actually points to an array so this array is basically index like this 0 1 2 3 4 5 and each of these entries will actually hold the absolute address of the kernel mode api so for example 25 will actually hold the absolute address address of nt create file api remember this is the kernel mode version of api which is actually exported from ntoskrnl.exe so this is actually you know does the actual operation in the kernel now how does it look like in in 64 bit so this is how it looks in 64 bit the syscall actually takes place and the transition happens and this is our ki service table now here the ki service table actually you know keeps track of uh, routine offsets for example this 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 one for this two three four like this and to be able to file the actual uh, function address kernel function address what you have to do you have to do this you have to do you have to take the system call which is zero one in this case and take the routine offset and do unsigned right shift and that actually you know gives you the routine absolute address and this is actually useful when you are actually trying to find out the address of your of your kernel routine through NDBG. So uh, that's all I wanted to discuss in today's video. I hope you have found this video useful. So if you have any further question, uh, please uh, drop those questions in the comment section below. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you.